Hello, Brother Anthony. Brother Charlie, you have to tell you something. <clears throat> I'm clearing my throat. I don't know why I'm clearing my throat. Look, every once in a while, I go on like, I don't want to say, but let me put it this way. I haven't been drinking lately. When I say drinking, you know, I don't drink a lot. You know, some wine, I might go. In fact, in a couple of weeks, you know, I'll be in Cape Town, and my man in Cape Town, you know, we drink Shiraz together. You know, he gets the organics. Well, we have some really good Shiraz. But I haven't been drinking, you know, no, no, not, my, not my regular Guinness, you know, beer, no no wine, no nothing like that. I think it just has to be because it's just right before my birthday, and I sort of do the, those kind of things. Plus, I've been doing a lot of writing. So I gotta really have a clear head because my writing is like you know, so it's dense, you know. <laughs> so it's not good. Anyway, I bring that up because I'm, I'm just just gonna show you. Okay, good, good. Can you just hold this for, for, for just 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 a minute? I gotta, I gotta get to the, this is the Saturday Dispatch. Dispatch is a local not local. It comes from East London paper. Here. Let's see. Let's, uh, let's just get this thing ahead. Paper down there. Get this. Oh, oh yeah. Uh, it's a province blows eight billion in booze. Now, before you start shaking your head, but you know this. I said that I think. So let me just I took some notes. You know, so let me just see my notes and I know what they're saying. Is that it's actually 8.6 billion in booze. <laughs> but what they're saying is that it also generates 1.7 billion in taxes. Hmm. You know, I know the news say, why of the nine provinces that's in the South Africa, this is like the fourth largest thing with booze. But remember, Eastern Cape, we poor. Very. We ain't got no money. Mm. So we really can't afford this. Mm. I mean, bro. Anyway, now this, this 1.7 billion is from the, from the financial year of 2014-2015. Uh, you know, currency was current, you know. And this is what the liquor board said. But now this, but this, but here's the thing. There's like 8,311 legal, you know, or, or, or taverns or licenses, something like that. They they found like 405 illegal taverns. Wait a second now, but think about it. If you found 405 illegal taverns, that means there's a whole lot more. <laughs> and we're not caught. We're not told. Let's say if I come over your house now, this is an American custom, or I, I say a Western custom. But I might bring a bottle of wine. You know, so they they you can't count that. I mean, I, I bought it for them, but I, so not, but if everybody comes to your house with a bottle of wine or liquor or something like that, then hey, you got a lot of booze there. That's a lot of people drinking. And you know what happens on Alice on the weekends? Ooh, boy. Anyway, my point really is, is that, so you have a lot of alcohol being consumed. And of course, not just being consumed by adults. Let's think of the children. Now, as you, as you know, I'm wearing my Made in Alice Youth Dialogue t-shirt. Your voice should be heard. Oh, it's like that. It's an initiative made in Alice. It's a good initiative. But they always talk about the same things. You know, they're not going to be talking about this kind of thing. Because there's so much in the culture. But I've got to think, wait a second. So what's this really about? Why, why are people drinking so much? And look, this is not just uh, South Africa. Even though South Africa has surpassed Australia in drinking, which is like amazing to me. Uh, but you know, like say, like say yeah, um, uh, Britain. They drink all the time. The taverns are famous for their taverns. But I found this, uh, this is a reaction to a poem that was written by, uh, 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 I guess it's aboriginals, right? But they asked uh, uh, some white settlers, whatever, to, to comment on the poem. And the poem is called The Black Drunkard. And then they say, well, uh, the, the guy just responded to the poem, says, you know, he just looks at the poem and says, that means that, that, that but, but, the, but the poem is saying that, that the Aboriginals don't like this Australia and want the old Australia back. <laughs>
It's the Aboriginals saying this, you know, mm. because because um, right now they just want to uh, they just want to fill their they call it flagons, I guess, like that. Mm. They just want to fill the flagons, and, mm. and then as quickly as they can get away from the pain, you know. So, oh, so go on out, come on out. Let me talk to the people here. Let me talk to them. Talk. <laughs> this, this is important. Yeah, okay. Now, what they're also saying is that they're being the, the Aboriginals are being being hung up and crippled. You know, and this referring to the black deaths. You see, that's what's going on. Yeah. And here's, here's the thing. Here's the thing. They're saying that the bellies are not, are not. They have enough, not enough food for the bellies. You see, for stomachs, and not enough medicine. You know, and they work for white people to pay them no money. White people pay them no money. Now they say they should be treated better, and with better pay and something, they can treat, they can treat them better. It's not right the way they treat the Australians or the Aboriginals, and they want the old Australia back. Now, this book, oh yeah, welcome back. Dr. Kelly. So what, that was just, you know, home, you know, right But here's the thing. As you know, I watched the Kaiser Report religiously. I like to say it that way because I watch it all the time when I go to church. But here's the thing. They point out that, yeah, the old, you know, say Britain, they're drinking themselves to death. What's happening in the States right now? There's a lot of shooting going on. I mean, you hear about shooting of, of black people, but there's a lot of guns and a lot of shooting. That's a frustration because people can't really wrap their heads around it. But the thing is, if you have no money, and even if you get a job, you realize the job is worthless because the prices keep on going up. So people without money, they're suffering. But even you who are getting a job, you see? So this is all hooked into the financial thing that's going on. We're frustrated because we can't get jobs because you can't, you can't and if you get a job, you don't, you're not paid enough. So this frustration works it out according to your society, which is a, a certain way. So if you really look at it, and back to this woman that I told you about, like 1982, down in, I think this old woman living in Harlem, she said, all I know is before the drugs came in, the jobs went out. You can define drugs as well, you want to define it, you know. And she was talking about hard drugs, you know, like, you know, the crack and the, the, the heroin or whatever. Mm -hmm. But that's the thing, when people can't get what they need, they have to act out in certain ways. If you, if you have a lot of alcohol, that's what you do. If you have a lot of guns, that's what you do. So that's our problem. We're in for a rude, rude, very rude awakening. In the next few, when I say few, I'm talking months now. I'm not even talking about years now. And this is that's not projection. I'm just saying, just check it for yourself. That's what I'm trying to say. Look, look, this. I don't want to bring anybody down, but this that's the way it is. And this has been a, a dispatch from the arts director of murders, and that would be me, T, from the Patterson Statement Trades to bet, letting you know what I only suspect. <laughs>